Okay guys, welcome to a hot, sweaty Sunday in Southern California. Culture Capital World it is Sunday, so y'all need to get your prayer powers out. Don't just pray yourself, call the whole church because I need you to pray for somebody. Um, yeah, this is the somebody. Oh, you're saying that this is not a somebody. Well, yeah, I really don't care that much about people. Except you, my subscribers, I care deeply, deeply about you from the very bottom of my heart. No, I care about Tam Tam, but uh, my feelings about others tend to bounce all over the place. Anyway, welcome to episode number four in a playlist about this Bajo Quinto that I rescued from a sun-baked, sun-baked store front window in Ventura, California. Culture Capital World, that is where you know it, Rob and Guitar 48 are. So I saw this, had to have it. He did everything not he could not to sell to me because it was that bad. So I did a playlist, it's up there. First episode is about this guitar where it came from uh, well we know it came from Rob's but after that I'd belabor that point greatly at the beginning just to eat up some more airtime because some of you say I talk too much yeah I got your grandma praying for you about that you don't need to be like that anyway you need to be like this so where was I okay episode number two we took the back of this off and explored what we might call term used loosely the structure of it and how it was built and it was basically built with whatever somebody had episode three we went and saw my friend Manuel Ayala in Los Angeles actually Paramount cultural capital of the world and he told us about all uh, what these instruments are who plays them um, the origin and you want to see that now we're back to working on this thing because I am literally pulling well you can't see that part because this is supposed to be the opening for work I already did so get your time machine set it on full speed ahead and let's go to bed and see what I did okay guys first thing is we're pulling the strings off of this thing and having one of these is great there's also a DeWalt one that works off of a gyroscope so you don't have to do this you can just tilt it one way or the other and the more you tilt it the faster it goes etc but these strings are on here in sets and so they're kind of strung around here like so so there is a loop it is made check out that music but this loop here feeds through this like an oil field choker right and then I just pull this through and there are five sets the big uh, first set and then they get smaller as you go but let me get these off here I'm gonna save these because I don't even know where to buy these it might take an oil field and rigging supply company so I'm just putting these loops together you can see that there's choker loops on the ends of these strings and then there are two bolts holding this on that you can see right there that's got to go okay the first part about getting this bridge off is these uh, bolts right here there's a plug holding this one this one's opened up uh, but these are old they're square nut um, and I have loosened that up a little bit and we will pop that down with this nice little tack hammer that I left laying around from another project there we go yeah this is highly technical stuff y'all 
this is funny you're not going to believe this but you would think that the last thing that someone would do using these old antique square nuts is they actually recessed another nut and double nutted this so it won't back off so it's not just as simple as loosening them up just because you didn't have expensive materials didn't mean you didn't do that right it doesn't mean you didn't do that right that's amazing all right i will tell you what the fact that that is double nutted is impressive because if it wasn't in the way it's rusty I would have had a nightmare so again you can't judge a book by its cover that is for sure Well, uh, for some reason, I'm going to keep these, if I can get it back on here. Let's flip this over and see if that was glued. Yes, it was. Alrighty, we'll get the other one. I'm going to have to chip this out here to get to it. Okay, I've got this super old chisel, and I'm going to try to get down in a corner of this and pop that out. And then we can take our trusty razor blade and get some of that stuff out of the slot of the screwdriver. Now that I look back on it, I think if I would, if I would have put some mineral oil on that bolt a couple days ago, it might have made it easier, but... I better watch that top. I don't want to scratch it up at all. Bingo. Okay, now with the bolts off, I can see where the back of this was raised up a little bit because this, of course, is shrunk and uh, has settled in, which means this is pivoting forward. And I didn't know if this was just sitting on here or what, but there was glue in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up hobo hot plate and granny's iron and we are going to use some heat to help our friend the palette knife get this off of here so let's plug this in and I like it when stuff that's a hundred and some years old gets helped out yeah Tammy's over here laughing Tammy's at the bench today guys isn't that cool so on there it's on and we'll put a couple of these underneath here and get this bridge off here these things are going to come in handy when we're doing the bracing too okay since this isn't food grade we go to granny's iron instead of sacrificing our apprentice mini chick flick teal pointer like going like this and hearing it scream you can just go yeah just spit on it and see if it acts like grandma's iron now you don't want to go prying in here 100 miles an hour we don't know what kind of glue this is it would be nice if it were high glue but we don't know that so we just want to come in and get that edge free 
a little bit at a time. And again, walking this hot knife over is a good thing. Now I have seen some finer old guitars, European guitars, where you start prying on this scrolling, it will pop right off. So and take your time, come in and get that glue around the edge to break loose a little bit and then just keep working it. I'll check in here in a minute when we get a little bit closer. Okay, let's zoom that camera back out. A word to the wise. You'll see some people breaking these off and getting them close because you want to remember if this is heated up and you're working way out here, you're actually going to melt your lacquer or your finish or whatever's going on here. So it never hurts to have a couple of these that are shorter or pay attention to your angle. Like I'm coming in here now that I've got this on here and I'm working this like so. But you can take these to a vise and snap that off right there and then you're really close to your work. On a fine guitar, you would not want to be having some blade this long. Now, if you're using a bridge heater, uh, that's a little bit different, and I'll show you one if I remember. It's kind of like a, a block heater for a snowmobile. Those work good. You can tell when you're getting somewhere because you'll hear noises like this. It'll start to squeak. Hear that? Yeah, we're getting through. Now, I'm halfway through. This is going in up to here, you see here. And so, when I'm walking it this way, this is a good time to work on this scroll and get the edges loose. Remember, this is really delicate. This is the part you don't want to mess up. Just spin it around like that until you get underneath everything. Let it heat up again if you need to. There we go. You can see that everything is through right there. And we just walk around like this. If the knife starts to cool off, you can tell, heat it up again. All right, we've switched sides now. There it is. Look at that. All right, there's going to be some work to do here. Get this nice and flat, but you can see right here that this whole thing is there's almost 10 millimeters right there the space in here this all has to come up so now we're going to flip it over and these were glued in so we are going to cut these loose and then all this bracing right here is going to come out all of this we're going to leave the curving because that's what it is but um, we're going to pull all this bracing out because this part right here needs to be flexed back down and that's going to happen with a body press and steam There we go. Clean one owner. Okay, now the fun part is we're just going to get all these braces off. And who knows what the top is going to look like when we're done, but it is what it is. I know that these braces can be 
a little bit bigger than they are now, that's for sure. That ridge plate will hide some of these holes here. See in a while, there's no sense in you suffering this agony with me. Okay, I just had a visit from the quality control person named Fred. And he seemed to think Granny's iron should have been thrown away in 1920 right after it was made. And he's using this heater contraption here. And um, I don't want to say he was right or anything, but I think the most commonly used term in the world of luthierism is, 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 is Fred was right. Yeah, there's no wood coming up now. But in the words of the infamous Pee Wee Herman, I meant to do that. All right, I think that's a good place to stop because the guitar is starting to fight back. Um, you saw the braces come out and we have pulled everything to here. Now, I do want to show you if I do have something I can use, I'm going to put this like this, and we will use Chick Flick Teal Pointer. You see, there is a gap under there. You see that air gap? That's how much this is bowed down. We are going to have to do a lot of reinforcement. I am ultimately going to put a piece of wood in here and pop this up. We are going to be off into the world of remember our body press remember this thing it also works as a neck removal jig have you ever seen that episode because it's right up there right about now anyway you can get this or any guitar it's got a cut out for guitars that have a neck this is not good for see that cut out for the neck I did this off of a dreadnought so dread not that your guitar is too big for that thing. Anyway, I gave you an episode on how to build that. There's an, I think there's a playlist called Jigs or something like that where I show you all the wonderful things that I pretend that I invented. I stole most of it from Darren Dukes right up there, right about now. If there's not, I'll make one. But this thing started giving up the ghost there's a big crack over here and we know that there used to be a brace right here and now it's right here bracing up the feelings i'm trying to hide for you anyway there was a nail in it isn't that classic but when we were taking the bridge off this thing in the episode the fact that somebody double nutted this says that somebody knew they were doing what they were doing and just because they didn't have everything they needed does not mean that they were not a good Bajo guitar builder so yeah we'll take a little break here because I got a lot of stuff to do just so you know I've had um, sponges in the case with this thing for a couple of weeks and it is still very dehydrated so when we start to pull this thing back together if i don't use steam to push this up we're going to be getting cracks anyway what was i telling you where that brace was right there if you look on this side there was another side brace sitting on top of it and somehow that wasn't built right and as the thing aged that brace that used to be over here is actually what caused this to blow out and and ultimately cracked when I was reaping on it to get that stuff out. So, I will get set up the next time. There's gonna be some tricky stuff here. If you haven't seen me uh, get tops back where they need to be on flat tops, I think I'll burn another car. There was a spot where we did a Gibson B25. They had some phony bridge on that thing. We replaced it, but there was a part in there where the body was pulled up like so or the the uh, bridge was pulled up the bridge plate needed to be replaced and what else oh 
I wasted enough time to give you one last link up there. On Christmas, I did something about rig up trucks and structure and stuff that will blow your mind. If you're not uh, uh, an alcohol and drug user, you will be once you listen to that episode. No, not really. Don't even go there. It's Sunday, remember? I will see you next time. I had to do that because that way the automatic thumbnail chooser chooses that and I'm sure that's what you have been dying to see. Don't just sit there, click like, click subscribe. Remember, if you replace yourself in this rented lip subscription list with two of your friends, you're off and you're good with the man behind this. No, I'm not behind it. I didn't mean it like that. Okay. Okay. Good. All good. Let's go.